Today, we look at how you can make key decisions in life and use Brexit as the example not to follow. Brexit remains one of the most topical issues in politics right now and continues to be a learning lesson for all of us on the channel as we previously saw how fears can influence decisions and in the case of Brexit, the fear of immigration specifically and how you can manage that fear to make rational and objective decisions. If you missed that part, I will be linking it in the description of this video down below. In today's video, I'll continue our focus on Brexit and better understand how after identifying and acknowledging fears you may have when taking specific decisions, how you can then follow through a process to make the correct decision for you. Before we begin, for those who don't know, the Brexit referendum was a vote held in the UK on whether or not to remain in the European Union or the EU. The public voted to leave with a 52% vote to leave, winning over 48% who chose to remain which began a process for the UK to begin negotiations with the members of the EU to try and work out the details of the leaving process. The key focus here isn't about Brexit and the possible outcomes of all that is happening, but rather understanding the process of how to make key decisions in order to avoid the chaos that Brexit has resulted in and instead ensure you set yourself up to make the most effective decisions in your life. To quickly reiterate the four step process we identified last time when identifying fears related to a decision. Number one, write about your fears. Number two, identify the worst case scenario. Number three, consider whether the decision you will be making will be permanent. Number four, talk to friends, family or professionals. So once you've identified the fears you may hold when having to take a major decision in life, what do you need to factor in when considering what decision to make? Number one, stay calm. Emotions, whether positive or negative, can impact your ability to make a rational decision and force you to make an impulsive decision instead. When you have any decision to make, it's important to stay as calm as possible. If you are struggling to stay calm, put off making the decision until you're thinking more clearly. How you do this is up to you, as what works for some might not always work for you, but perhaps try to take a few deep breaths to help calm yourself down. If you have more time, go into a quiet room and do about 10 minutes of deep breathing exercises. I will be releasing videos in the future about some breathing exercises that can help, so stay tuned for them and if you haven't subscribed already, consider subscribing for more content to help you get the most out of your life. Another technique that's quite useful to try and remove the emotion is to disassociate yourself and take a more objective stance. You could do this by playing out a role play in your head where you self-interview yourself to better question your opinion and understand the rationality behind your feelings. On the Brexit campaign, emotions of people were often targeted as a way of swaying decisions. The same could be argued about the US presidential elections back in 2016, where many voted Trump as he represented change that many craved for after feeling disillusioned with the existing system. Number two, get as much information as possible. Decisions are better made when you have enough information to make informed decisions. Making decisions, especially if they're about important topics, should rely on logic as opposed to emotion. Do some research to find out as much as you can about your decision. We've previously discussed on the channel how building belief by providing references to support those beliefs is an incredibly powerful way to have strong beliefs. It's the same for making decisions. By gathering information and references in support of the decision, you strengthen your certainty that the decision is the correct one. This was a fundamental issue with the Brexit vote, as much of the general public cast votes without fully understanding or gathering information on their vote. Post-voting, many have said that they have come to regret their decision and the foundations of this often lay in the fact that they felt misinformed. Number three. Use the five whys technique to understand the problem. Asking yourself why five times can help you uncover the source of a problem and determine if you are making a decision for the right reasons. So let's follow through an example for Brexit. The five whys might be as follows for leavers. Number one, why do I want to vote to leave? Because I want to restrict the level of immigration into the UK. Number two, why do I want to restrict the level of immigration? because I want more opportunities available to the British citizens in job prospects. Number three, why do I want more opportunities for British citizens? 
because I feel British citizens are missing out on jobs being given to foreign nationals in the marketplace. Number four, why do foreign nationals get a preference in the job markets ahead of British citizens? Because companies know that they can potentially get cheaper labour by hiring foreign nationals ahead of the British citizens. Number five, why are foreign nationals potentially cheaper for companies in comparison to the British citizens? Because British citizens have an expectancy of a higher standard of living compared to many foreign nationals who come to the UK for a better standard of living in comparison to where they come from. Now let's look at this example. You can see how the five whys has helped me break down the initial desire to curb immigration to understand the crux of the matter, which is that foreign nationals might be more willing to work at a cheaper rate compared to the British citizens, especially undercutting them in the job market, because doing so allows them to have a better standard of living compared to their previous circumstances at the expense of the British people. This also shows the power of this technique. As I mentioned in the last video, I actually voted to remain. But doing the process here helps me better understand the views of the opposition, meaning it can be used both ways, to understand my perspective better or someone else's. Number 4. Think about who's affected. First and foremost, you should consider how your decision affects you. Especially, how does your decision affect how you consider yourself as a person, your values and goals? Making decisions that are not in line with your values can leave you feeling unhappy and dissatisfied. You should also consider how the problem or decision affects other people. Will any of the possible outcomes negatively affect the people you care about? Take others into account throughout your decision making process, especially if you are married or have children. This was a highly contentious point during the referendum, as many of the voters voting leave were of an older generation with the majority of the younger generation voting remain. Brexit will have a long-lasting impact and that warrants the question, what do the future generations, especially those who have to deal with long-term consequences of Brexit, really want? I'm not saying that the people of an older generation are any less important in their vote, but rather my question would be how many made their decision understanding the long-term impact it has on the younger generations, including their kids or grandkids. Number five, list all of your options. Sometimes it might appear that there is only one course of action, but that is rarely ever true. Even if the situation seems limited, try to make a list of alternative options. You can also speak to others as part of this consideration to get a range of options before taking the decision. Number six, list out potential benefits and losses of your decisions. If your problem is complex and you feel overwhelmed by a variety of possible outcomes, consider making a list to help guide your decision making process. You can also assign points values to each item on your list, totaling these up at the end of the process to understand which ultimately appears to be the better decision to take. Doing this process helps you consider and factor the greater impact your decision might have. When talking about Brexit, we focused heavily on the point of immigration, but this exercise would help you consider more factors such as the economy, business and marketing, trade or holidays and recreational activities to name just some examples. Once you've taken into consideration these various factors, it's time to make a decision itself. Here, you choose how you want to proceed and finally take action on making your final decision. Don't forget to watch part 1 if you haven't already as that will give you a comprehensive guide in conjunction to everything covered in this video to help you make the most informed decision. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.